if you know Man City, they love a good benching. But what the hell, but... And in FPL, we love a good bench boost, ooh. But what if we were extra, extra cheeky and bench boosted in game week one? What? This is the FPL 2021-22 Game Week 1 Bench Boost Draft. The Bench Boost in FPL is a magical chip that allows all of your bench players to actually score your points, so hey! But we usually get discombobulated from this by focusing on it so much, your team's worse off before it and after. And it could actually leave you in a worse state than Barcelona's finances are terrible. So what if... We took advantage of our unlimited transfers before game week one to set up a team absolutely perfect for a bench boost to get us all of our points. Not only to potentially gain an advantage straight at the start, right? But also means you don't have to worry about it later on. You're all sorted. Now, this is a strategy I have teased with myself a little bit here, yeah, but I don't think I got the balls to do it, to be honest, lads. No, 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 no. Yeah, a big bull ass was required, I would say, yeah. But I thought, why not build a benchy boost team here, which not only could convince me to do it, but also might convince some of you nice fellas out there as well. So we start this game week one bench boost team with the FBL legend himself, Emi Martinez. There's a reason why he is still the most popular goalkeeper this year, right? After he managed to score a whopping 186 points last year. That's absolutely crazy! But here in game week one, he plays against the newly promoted Watford away. Now with this game being away, I feel like Watford can actually get some chances and be in the game a little bit, you know? But probably not have enough quality to actually finish any of those chances and score. So you always know your man Emmy is always going to get them out the mud and rack up all of those save points for the Villa. But also a clean sheet is looking very secure as well. Maybe even so secure, the clean sheet's literally got a seatbelt on and everything. Oh, points income in. So for this strategy, I think he's the perfect goalkeeper to target the first fixture and the perfect player to start off this team. But next, and the subkeeper for this benchy boost, it's Robert Sanchez. A very popular geese in the FPL world as well, isn't he right now? Yeah, he is. But with how good Brighton's defensive stats were last season, there's no surprise at all. They play Sean Dyche's Brexit Burnley in game week one though, but their big boy, big Chris Wood, is actually gone to the Olympics, so might not be back, slash might not have good enough rest, ready for this fixture. So basically, they can he score. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> so I reckon there's a decent chance for a clean sheet here as well. And that is the keepers done. Now, important thing to note, right, that if you are going to bench boost in game week one and probably go for it, you probably will be wildcarding very soon after it anyway. So it doesn't actually matter how much money you put into your goalkeepers, right? As you're not keeping them long term anyway. So with this, just target the best fixture and whatever the cost is, then... Oh well, it's fine. <laughs> but moving on to the brick wall defence. A defence so good, it makes the Great Wall of China look like it was made out of Lego. Oh, no, 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 this defensive wall. Oh, so much better. With the first one, joining us being Sir Trent Alexander-Arnold, the very posh name man himself, yes. But the crossing fetish man is back again in hopefully what could be an even more solid defence than ever before in the Liverpool. Where they will be playing Norwich in the first game, but could we actually see a pookie party, huh? But then you realise um, Van Dijk, Gomez, Matip roll back, Canate has joined them as well and also Fabinho back in the midfield as well yeah the only party that Pookie is gonna have is a birthday party later on down the year not having any goals in this game <laughs> but Trent even if he somehow concedes you could still get all the points with all those goals and assists anyway so absolutely no doubt in for this team here but the next player to join us is the one and only Ben Chilliwilly Ben Chilwell some people call him Mr. Apron Man right because you know he's really great at the front but then he's wide open at the back not very good at defending but I'm the Tuchel system, he's actually one of the best defenders in the entire game as he's proper up there for all the goals and a very big goal threat. We also know how unbelievably scarily good the Chelsea defence was last season, so playing against a team with a new inexperienced manager also at home in game week one, yeah I really don't think there's many other defenders with that much potential in game week one, he's got to be in. But that's also what's great about this strategy right, is because Chelsea's fixtures past the first week are not very good, like a proper sea of red, very wibbly wobbly a lot of people will probably avoid them and not go for that game week one against palace which actually is an amazing fixture to target in my opinion so that means if you do this you get all the points all the differential points as well lovely stuff which you know what i like the sound of that so much 
I've only gone and chucked another one of their boys in here, yeah, ooh! And that man is Rhys James. Mr. Jam James himself has usually been playing as the other wing back for Chelsea, hasn't he? But with him not playing much at the Euros as well, and also as Billiqueta playing at the Euros quite a bit, I think it's almost guaranteed that he will be playing wing back in this game. He is also very much like a Chilwell, great attacker potential, but in this amazing defence to back it up too, so whatever way it goes, I reckon some points are incoming. And all of those points are just for you, because nobody else has them, amazing. But the next defender to join us here, it's Vladimir Sufal. Our checkmate himself had a very good season last year in the Prem, didn't he? Getting nine assists to his name, that is very good. <laughs> Actually one of the most out of all the defenders as well, which I think is going unspoken. Like why? They're so under the radar, he did so well. <laughs> but this week he plays against Newcastle. A Newcastle team that do have some kind of good attacking players, right? But if West Ham managed to keep Rice and also have most of their defenders fit, they're actually a pretty solid team at the back. And I reckon the clean sheet could come in here. But again, we have the attacking potential to cover us anyway if he doesn't get that. And the final defender to join this team that's going to boost us up all the ranks with a benchy boost. Ah, it's Tarek Lamperty. He's one of the most hyped up cheap defenders in the game this season after being so electric and lively at the start of last. He did have injuries quite frequently last season though, so you know, he didn't quite show us his potential, but also he could be a concern long term, you know, will those injuries come back up? But if you do want to attack just one fixture year, this is definitely worth it in my opinion. And it also means you will have the double Brighton defence getting an edge over everybody who's just going for one, which is quite popular as it going. So that is the defence done. Now if you notice, we've gone for the most attacking defenders in great defensive teams. Well, and West Ham as well. <laughs> but also potentially playing the worst attack as well. So all of the potential of clean sheets, points, goals, everything. It's all income in. Now, yeah, it is quite expensive. But again, with this bench boost strat here, you're probably going to wild card soon after anyway. So it doesn't quite matter. You should always just try and target the best fixtures and the best players. So that is what we're going for. But next, we move up the field to the midfield. Where we start with... Mo Salah! Mo Salah! <laughs> You do have to spread the funds a little bit like butter in this team, you know, if you want to actually have a full team of good playing players. But you do have to chuck the cash at the Mo Salah man, yeah? Because not only is he one of the best ones for Game Week 1, he's going to be a captain, isn't he? Like, don't overthink it. He's going to be your captain. And, like, do I even need to explain why he's such a good option? Like, it's Salah. <laughs> he's had 100 goals in the last four seasons playing Norwich in, in the first week. That's it. Done. He's, he's there. That's why. He, yeah, he's not leaving. <laughs> But then next, the rest of the midfielders might not actually seem as amazing, but in terms of the fixture itself, if you just look at this fixture, then yeah, we could get all the points with all of them just here. But the first one of them is Chelsea star boy himself, Mason Mount. Mount had a pretty decent season for Chelsea last year, but some might say there are some better options for Chelsea, which I might agree with, yeah, but we all know how much Tuchel loves a rotation, Rene. You really don't know who's going to start, apart from a Mason Mount, who I think is probably one of the safer ones and one of the most guaranteed starters in that Chelsea attack, which I think is a very important thing to note here. You really don't want to be bench boosting and then have two or three of your players not even starting, meaning it wouldn't be worth it, right? You definitely want to have players that are guaranteed to start, so that is why he is here. Uh, in before he gets benched give week one, but uh, I like it. <laughs> the next player to join us is one that's starting to get even more traction than he was before, and he was getting a lot already. It's Emiliano uh, Tongue Twister Buendia. Now, Buendia has moved from the promoted team in Norwich to the Villa. So now, with the Villa, he's versing another promoted team in the first week. Yes, Watford's defensive stats look good in the championship, right? They might not be too bad, but if you're looking for fixtures to target, then obviously you're going to look at the promoter teams because technically they, they should be the weakest, right? Yeah, yeah. So that is why the new Villas man is here. But then the next midfielder to boost our bench, it's Jack Harrison. He had a great season last year, scoring eight goals and getting 10 assists. Ah, so at six million quid, I think he's definitely worth a punt against any opponent. Now, Man United away... It, yeah, it's not the easiest of fixtures. Definitely the hardest one out of all the players here. But Leeds are a team who love a counter-attack against the big teams, especially when they're away. But also, they are a team who can score against anyone. So I definitely think it's worth chucking them in here. Yeah. And then the final midfielder to join us in this team. It's the new number 10 for Arsenal. Emil Smith Rowe. Row, row, row your boat to cheap, Beth, your points, hey! <laughs> he is only starting at 5.5 million year and could be a nailed on player for Arsenal. Now that would be pretty good. Brentford might not be the easiest to fix your right, but again, you got to target to promote the teams if you're just going for game week one, I would say so. He's also perfect for this strategy because just like Chelsea, Arsenal have hard fixtures 
after the first week. So a lot of people are holding off and be like, no, 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 I don't want to touch them yet. But with you just looking at game week one, then you can get in all their players. Well, hey, so I reckon he could actually do bits this week. And that is the midfield done. So you might notice it's not actually the strongest, right? We've only got one premium in the midfield there. Like, what's going on? But that's because if you're looking to have a very, very good balance squad where all of your players could score big, big points in this game week one bench boost, then you are going to have to sacrifice some of the big boys to make sure you properly spread out your money. So that is what we've done here. But also, if you just look at the player and look at the fixture, they could very well outscore some of the more expensive boys anyway. So price doesn't even matter. But then we forward on to the last few players and the forwards. Starting with Cavani. Give it, give it, give it to Eddie Cavani. Now you might have already noticed this is a brew no team. Yeah, no Bruno Fernandes. But that's because we're risking it for a biscuit year with Cavani. Now Eddie is a man who can literally outscore every single player in the league. He could be the golden boot winner. He is that good, right? But the problem with him is you know he can't start every game. But when he's got time to rest, like over an entire summer, I think he could do very, very well at the start of the season, especially in game week one. Like surely, surely he starts in the first game. So in a one-off game year against the Leeds, I'm really backing Cavani over Bruno and I reckon he can score all of the goals. Like Atric incoming, it could happen. But next, and the penultimate player in this team, it's Antonio, the big man himself. He's just an absolute boy, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Where when he is fit and ready to go, he can do absolute bits in any game. But when he has a game like Newcastle in the first one, oh, oh, oh yes, all of the goals. Again, he is a player you might not want to trust long, long term, right? Because he's got a lot of injuries that keep coming up and all that. But in just one game, you can't deny that he could be absolute gold. And yeah, that's why he's in. And to finish off the team with all of the goals incoming for this bench boost team, game week one bench boost. Like, what an absolute madman, right? <laughs> and that player is Ollie Watkins. We have another Villa man here, so uh, hopefully they're not the villains to us in our bench boost, and, and all of them can get something. But again, we got to target the promoted teams, but also Villa, they strengthen, so I reckon they can definitely get the win here. So why not go for their forward, who got 14 goals and 9 assists last season, who's only getting better as well, and also might be on penalties, ah, huh? maybe, maybe. But that is it for the very ballsy, I must say, gaming one bench boost team. Now, if you do want to use your bench boost straight away using this strategy, bench boost game week one, and also probably wildcard straight after as well, I really would suggest going full fallout with a team like this that you know you are going to have to wildcard after. Otherwise, you probably won't get much out of it, right? If you're if you're planning to build a team that's okay after, then the bench boost itself might not be as good. So it's probably better to save it later on. So if you do want a bench boost game week one, you're going to have to go for a team properly like this, in my opinion. But maybe, maybe you do want a bench boost in game week one, but you don't want to force yourself into a wildcard. Maybe you're like, I probably will wildcard, but maybe I don't want to do it straight, straight away. So I thought I'd be an extra cheeky boy and provide that very team for you. So I have another team that looks like this which then allows you to line up like this instead. It's still a very nice balanced team, which could get all of the points. Every single player is very good, right? But with some more longer term options in there, it means you might not have to splunk your wild card straight away. So that could be lovely stuff. And that could be the very thing for you. And that is actually it too. So everyone, please let me know if I have teased you enough yet. And let me know if you are tempted to go for something like this, this absolutely crazy strategy. And if so, please let me know what approach you want to go for. A safer one, which then you don't have to wildcard or just the all-out one so you can get all the points straight away and then wildcard after. But that is going to be it for today. So thank you all for watching. And remember... <laughs> don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>